Welcome to Sleepless in St. Canard when nostalgia replaces REM cycles. I'm Kitty. And I'm Ange. And we haven't slept in 30 years. This is a podcast about the 90s Disney cartoon Darkwing Duck and the far more recent Dynamite Comics run of the same name. Today we uncover the truth of the Lorax. And if Launchpad has in fact drowned in a compassless ocean of neglected sidekickery. Let's say that Launchpad is dead. Uh, who do you think would do the best eulogy for him, Ange? Uh, Herb. They've been neighbors for a long time and they both share a, a love of food. And that's probably the only thing that Herb could say about him. And it would be funny because it's just true. And accurate. Oh, you know how they have like at, at funerals usually or, or wakes they have like the photo wall. Yes. Of like just cobbled together little collages. It's all just pictures of like Launchpad eating. Yes. <laughs> like there's this one like meme picture that's from an episode of Sailor Moon where it's um, Sailor Mercury, Amy, and she's like eating a, a hamburger, and she's just like, oh, and like every single one of those pictures on there is just going to be the launchpad version of him eating it, you know, Amy eating a cheeseburger. I like it. Headcanon accepted. Um, I do want to think that the funeral would be heavily attended by all the restaurant owners in St. Canard and Duckburg. Um, they'd have like their aprons flown at half staff and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because they'd have to re- like rework their entire budgets now that their biggest customer has bitten it. <laughs> R.I.P. to the true food v- VIP. Rest in pieces, Launchpad. <laughs> <laughs> in 20 pieces, um, as the chicken places would say. So there we go. Uh, today we attend the funeral of Launchpad McQuack and Darkwing Duck number 10 from Dynamite Comics. Beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect intro. I guess I, <laughs> I should give a summary because it's been a while. So as you remember, possibly from the last issue, after Launchpad fell in the water, they went all the way back to St. Canard. <laughs> and then Gizmo Duck was like, let me try and take care of St. Canard. And Darkwing was like, no, I can look for Launchpad and take care of St. Canard. And then her muddlefoot had appeared and had a tracker on his quackerware. On his quackerware, yep. That had been stolen by the Lorax. I know it's I know it's not going to be the Lorax and I think that's going to be the most disappointing thing for me. I was genuinely disappointed too when I read this and it <laughs> does reveal who it is and I was like, "Oh, I really was holding out for the Lorax for no particular reason <laughs> even though there was absolutely zero chance. This guy is the the scapegoat. <laughs> the Lorax got away. <laughs> that's my 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 theory. I'm sticking to it. It was the Lorax in actuality the whole time. That's what I want to believe, too. <laughs> oh, right. And also Stegmut caught Herb in his arms and cradled him yes. gently. And <laughs> and then they were all in the Thunderquack flying um, to go find Launchpad out in the middle of the ocean. Because all the Justice Ducks are there now. And Goslin. Yes, and Herb. And Herb, yes. So they're the all leader. squished in. All squished in together. Oh, and Neptunia, I believe was leading them somewhere too or was somewhere involved yeah i know we talked about it already too but like darkwing being like i'm just gonna go back to saint canard like surely the current has drifted launch pad back there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway okay let's see, let's see so what happens. we continue off in an underwater sub which is currently jam-packed with morgana stegmut goslin Darkwing, Herb Muddlefoot, and Gizmo Duck is at the wheel steering. In a and, submarine? Yeah, in a little submarine, and they're ha- they're looking very cramped in. And uh, Morgana says, "Dark, could you scooch over a tad? I'm a bit wedged between Stegmut's tail and Gizmo Duck's gizmos." And Darkwing says, "Crammed into a submarine with a giant dinosaur and no launch pad to even steer it, things can't possibly get any worse." Did we have to bring Herb? And you yes. know the answer to that, Kitty. Yes, you do. Of course, always. Here, I will. He goes with him. every outfit. And since Herb is in this panel, I will show him to you. Have some herbs. Oh, there he is. He's uh, he's right in there. I feel like Stegmut's looking right at him. <laughs> he's, he's like, hey, you like my tail? Stegmut's ass is kind of hugging him. 
It's nice and cozy. Herb, Herb is gently cradled between his butt cheeks. <laughs> it's a different. It's a different comic. Well, Stagmut does start whipping out some wieners for snacks. <laughs> he says, "I brought snacks." No. And Herb is absolutely down for this. He says, thank you, Stegmut. And for some reason, Goslin says, keen tofu, hot dogs. Um, okay. I don't know if it's like... Tofu dogs. Oh, maybe. Maybe she's meant to say keen gear and she's saying keen. But it. I was just thinking she's saying keen tofu. Keen co tofu dogs. And then Herb starts eating his and says, I should warn you, sometimes too many dogs can upset my tummy. And Darkwing just loses his shit and says, don't you dare get subsick during an adventure. <laughs> and like his his teeth are like Negaduck style teeth. I will show you in a moment. And then Herb immediately gets sick and turns green. And Stagmut says, hey, you match me. We're Herb. Oh, yeah. And they're looking for Ducklantis. So they're... They're staring well, at the I couldn't window. remember if that was this or Negaduck, because I feel like Negaduck is also going to, like, a mythical island place. Okay. Rot snacks. Oh, Herb. You're going to have so many Herb reaction emojis now. Oh, look at him. He's so happy eating that hot dog. So it looks like they've arrived at Ducklantis, and Neptunia is there to greet them, and she's looking pretty serious. And Darkwing says, are you sure we can't just head there without her? I've been there before, you know, which I'm trying to think back to the reference. Is it maybe uh, Neptunia's episode when she appears? I know he does end up in an underwater kingdom of hers. I know. I, I couldn't tell you. But I don't know if I it was no Atlantis because he says he's been there before. But anyways, Goslin and Morgana are not impressed because Launchpad needs them. And Morgana says, Usually I'd indulge you, Dark, but Goslin is right. You need to let go of your ego and save your friend before he's lost to us forever. Because uh, he's still holding his breath, I guess, down here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been three weeks. The man, while he could shovel down hot dogs, cannot breathe water. I will send you that, too. Because I do like their angry, disappointed stares. Like, they're not having any of this. Oh, yeah, no. It's like matching, disapproving stare. And then she hugs him and says, you're kind of lost without him, too. And it is a very cute panel. Yep. He's all like, bleh. And so Darkwing starts trying to move around and he's bumping into everybody. And he says, I am the terror that flaps in the night. Oops, excuse me. I am the sunburn that gives you a farmer's tan on a cloudy day. I am Darkwing Duck. And then he turns to Neptunia, who is outside in the water, and says, and I need your help. And everybody gasps in shock because Darkwing just asked for help. Also, there's a very worried-looking Herb Muddlefoot in this panel. <laughs> oh, he is very worried. They all don't know what to make of this. And Darkwing thinks they're being a little dramatic. He says, just because I can defeat every deranged devil and solve even the most scrupulous of scams on my own doesn't mean I don't ever allow others to assist. And Neptunia is just in the background like, and he's back. <laughs> <laughs> and Gizmodex says, for a second there, I thought maybe we were dealing with an imposter. Neptunia continues and says, I will help you. I like Launchpad, and I don't like any duck who trespasses in my ocean. And then Herb uh, shows her the little quackerware tracker, which Neptunia finds very interesting, and she tells them to follow her in the submarine. This away. Look at that. Herb coming in clutch. And so we see some fish, looks like swordfish, who's, who bow to Neptunia and say, Your Majesty. Oh, look, it's Neptunia the Great. I guess she's royalty around these parts. She's kind of a big deal. People yeah. know her. And Darkwing is not impressed by that. They obviously can't see me or they'd be even more odd. Fish are known for their terrible eyesight. And then as the little submarine is puttering past, one fish says, Mommy, what's that? And the mother guides him away and says, It's rude to point at strange looking ducks, dear. And Darkwing is just like, how dare they? <laughs> I guess he can speak fish. <laughs> It wouldn't surprise me. Like, he can't speak any useful languages, but he majored in fish in high school. And then Neptunia honks on her shell horn, 
mm-hmm. that I recall her having. And they ask what she's doing, and she says she's letting everyone know we're going into deep, dangerous waters, and that their queen may not return. Oh. And Herb says, "Oh, that's dark." Darkwing yeah. says, "You could always go home, Herb. We can take it from here." <laughs> and Goslin says, "Actually, at this point, he's in too deep, both literally and figuratively, which is true. Like, what are they going to do? Just launch Herb out into the ocean, probably." Darkwing Probably if Darkwing, want. yeah. <laughs> if he had it his way. So now Darkwing and Morgana have left the submarine and they've got like those little fish bowls on their head. Mm. And Neptunia is telling Darkwing that in the spirit of cooperation, he can come help her lead the way. And of course, Darkwing immediately elbows her aside and says, I thought you'd never ask. And also, he's looking real snatched. His waist got super (laughs) snatched all of a sudden, so I'm going to show you that. He put his girdle on that morning. It's the water. The water be snatching his waist. (laughs) Oh, he's very fit, yes. They hear an alarm going off on the sub. (laughs) And Gizmo Duck says, I added a evil shark alarm. Very specific. (laughs) Uh, yes. To the submarine as an upgrade, hope you don't mind. So I guess there's an evil shark nearby. As opposed to, like, you know, just a, a neutral shark. Yeah. and Neptun- chaotic, chaotic good shark. <laughs> yeah, and Neptunia says that's a harmful stereotype. Most sharks are totally fine, as long as they're left hmm. alone. But not all of them, because a shark does, in fact, come right out of the coral reef, chomp, chomp, chomping at them. And it approaches Neptunia from behind and she turns and she blows on her horn, which sends out like a sonic signal that makes the shark kind of dizzy. Mm-hmm. But I think it's only a temporary stun. Never fear, Gizmo Dick is here. And now where did I put? And he pulls out this little, uh, I don't know what to call it, a metal canister. And he says it's the solution to their shark problem. So he throws it and it goes soaring through the water. And the shark, of course, goes, you know, to chomp on it. And Darkwing, of course, isn't impressed. He says, your plan is to feed him. And Gizmo Duck says, wait for it. And when the shark goes to eat it, it explodes and it turns into a belt, like a strap that wraps itself around the shark with a fan on the top so that I thought initially they were going to ride the shark like a horse. Okay. But the fan actually just turns on and sends it flying backwards in the water wow. here i will show Killed you the imagery shark. oh it's like a like an industrial size fan thing yeah and there he goes bye sharky and then gizmo duck assures us that the shark will be fine that motor only lasts for about 15 minutes oh and i can see here that darkwing says that was amazing gizmo duck he's like we make a good team i guess we do and Gizmoduck is immediately thinking that there's an imposter in their midst. <laughs> <laughs> I have to imagine. Shoot him into space. Yeah. <laughs> Give him the herb model for deep sea treatment. I saw him venting. So they take off into this big dark hole in the water, which is wherever Neptunia said that most people don't return from. And then right. they see this dark silhouette of some sort of creature moving and Neptunia says, oh dear, it's Frank. And Darkwing says, Frank? And Neptunia says, Frank is the smartest being on the planet. And sure enough, a squid appears. And he's wearing a monocle, so that's how you know that he's super smart. It is a sign of intelligence and wealth. Yes. And he says, delighted to make your acquaintance. I'm Frank. Darkwing says, Pleasure, I'm Darkwing Duck, terror who flaps in the night, and genius inventor extraordinaire. I'm also quite humble. And then he goes to shake Frank's hand, and Frank proceeds to throw him across the ocean floor. I'm not sure why. He's just kind of a dick, I guess, this Frank. I, well, he is the smartest creature in the world. Didn't say he was the nicest. That is true. Neptunia does warn him to play nice. As you can see, there he is with his monocle. He is a squid, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. One of those. He's got eight tentacles, though. Don't squids have less than eight tentacles? Don't they have, like, six? Am I wrong on this? I could could not tell you. 
I am not a squidologist. I think that's why octopuses are octopuses, because they got eight, and squids have six? I'm going to Google this. Give me a moment, folks. All right. We have to do some on-the-fly marine biology Determine. Right. Come on. Tentacle. Internet. How many tentacles does a squid have? Ten. Ten! Yeah. I knew it was either more or less by two. Two of their arms are longer than the other eight and are called tentacles. Oh, they have ten arms. Two of their arms are longer than the other eight and are called tentacles. Oh, there you go. One, two, Good. three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. I think this guy's got only eight. He's not good enough for ten. <laughs> Maybe the other two are very small. That is true. Little wimpy legs in the middle. Frank grabs Gizmo Duck and Neptunia in his tentacles and says, "You're in my waters, Neptunia, and I don't feel like playing nice." And then proceeds to like squeeze them to death. Wow, Frank. Yeah, he's being pretty, pretty rude. Kind of a dick. I wish she had said, "That's Frank. He's just kind of a dick." To be honest, um, he's just kind of an asshole. We just that's why we don't go over to this part of the waters because we don't want to deal with Frank. And you know what? So far, I think that tracks. Darkwing got flung elsewhere. So uh, he's safe for now, but he decides that he's got to go back and help them. So he installed some waterproof jet settings onto his gas gun, and he starts firing it so that he can whoosh backwards. <laughs> he whooshes one way, and the shark <laughs> continues to whiz the other way past him. Mm-hmm. And Darkwing says, I got to talk to Gizmo Duck. That battery really holds a charge, which is true. But I don't know why he'd be concerned about the shark unless he's concerned about it coming back. Maybe he's just, I think he's just more impressed with the battery life being like, hey, I got to get me one of them. Forever batteries. So Darkwing yep. swings in and he's about to start with an I am the terror. But it turns out Stegmut has already handled it. And Frank the Squid says, Stegmut is a genius, which absolutely shocks Darkwing, because what? No way. And it turns out, Frank says, there's something called being hangry. Who knew? And so Stegmut mm -hmm. had given Frank a bunch of hot dogs. Hot dogs. Of course he did. And fed him. And because of that, Frank is no longer a dick. <laughs> 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 he just leaves. He's mm -hmm. like... Toodaloo! Goodbye. I, I'm out of here. I, I got no beef with you guys anymore. My planet needs me. Oh, hangry. And Gizmo Duck says, now you don't even have to fight a giant squid. You say that like it's a good thing, Darkwing. Very mm -hmm. sad about the fact that he didn't get to be a hero and kick the shit out of this squid. Well, to be fair, that squid did throw him across the entire ocean floor, so it was due for a little payback, I think. Mm-hmm. So Herb and Goslin are still in the submarine and Herb tells them based on the little radar thing that they need to go 20,000 more leagues under the sea. <laughs> Goslin asks what a league is and Herb says no idea. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I don't know either. I don't either. So they're getting into like the really really deep dark part of the the ocean and they can't see anything. So Neptunia blows on her horn and summons those little, what do you call them? The anglerfish? Except they, okay. look, they look like friendly anglerfish, not like terrifying ones like every other sci-fi. Like anglerfish? <laughs> yes, like anglerfish. They look like friendly fish. Like actual, yeah, anglerfish are not very nice looking creatures. And Morgana pops up and says that she's got an idea and she casts some kind of a spell that creates schools of glowing fish oh well that's useful and she says turgum at skula and i'm trying to figure out what that what sort of play on words they're using for her magic because it's not writing stuff backwards oh maybe skula is in school of fish mm -hmm. it's probably latin probably and darkwing says thanks morg because we can see everything even Ducklantis. Oh, and there it is, glowing in the distance. And then it turns into the Disney movie Atlantis with uh, Michael J. Fox and the <gasps> demolitions guy, who's the best part. 
So they're all getting ready. They're heading, swimming full force towards Duck Lantis. It's time for us. And they say, ready, set. Just as ducks. But before they can, they're stopped by the Lorax. <laughs> Got him. The Lorax is here and he points and he says, you found your way without the compass. Remarkable. <laughs> and Darkwing says, I had something better than a compass. I had. And before he could finish, Herb says, trackable quackerware. Darkwing says, uh, I was going to say the help of my good friends. But yes, Herb, I had the help of good friends plus a tracking device in your quackerware that luckily got stolen by our new foe. At Lorax Lantis. Yeah. Subsequently leading us right to the missing launch pad. And Lorax says, you never let anyone help you. That was the foundation of my entire evil plot. And Goslin asks the million dollar question we've all been wondering, which is, who are you? Is Launchpad there? Do they see him? No. He's, I don't know where Launchpad's corpse is at the moment. <laughs> they're like, wow, let us directly to Launchpad. Has it? I mean, <laughs> he's currently not, not there. I am ready to see the Lorax, but uh, first I'm going to send you a picture of the Lorax so that we can compare together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But is it going to be like a hyper-realistic Lorax, is it? I don't know. I, I'm going to go to my Google, and uh, the first one that I find is what I'm going to be what I'm going to send you. And uh, if it gives us both nightmares, it's the price we have to pay when the Lorax is a, a hardened criminal. Here he is. <laughs> oh. He's in plushy form. <laughs> yes. It's merchandise. All right. So that's him. That's our culprit. Let's and it. show me... Show me what he looks like in this comic book. Okay. So he throws back his cape and everything and says, I am Murduck. And he's a, a duck mermaid man. And everybody gasps oh. and says, Murduck, except Darkwing, who says, uh, who? Yeah. And Murduck gets super pissed off and says, this is why I had to steal the compass. Why? You got a problem finding true north? I don't, but you do. All those heroes and villains in the museum and not a single mention of me. Because, yeah, who the fuck is this guy? Anyways, I'll show you a picture of him. For real? No. Oh. I think I preferred him as the Lorax. Me have a mustache? The mustache is floating in the water, discarded and unloved. Oh, it's his. it was his disguise? Oh, yeah, there it is. I see it now. He should have kept the mustache. It would have made him look more interesting. It's just, um, yeah. I I reject this reality and institute my own where in the Lorax um, is stealing things and has an underwater civilization. I do like that uh, the Murdoch is not allowed to be tits out and has to have a tank top on. <laughs> the one rule of like the ocean. A, he's got, like, Neptunia fins on his head and stuff. He's purple and pink. He's a very... He's, he's basically Darkwing colored Murduck. He's got liver spots on his head. It, maybe they're supposed to be scales? I don't know. But he also kind of just like looks like Darkwing. Kind of. He's, not, he's got like maybe a bit of a bush root around about him too. I don't know. Anyway, Murduck, everyone's favorite character. And so we see some flashbacks of things that Murduck has done. Such as turning the sink on in Drake's bathroom at night so that it drips and wakes him up and turning on the sprinkler so that it splashes on drake when he's walking down the street also i don't know specifically why he was targeting drake or if he knows that drake is darkwing but drake apparently was his his arch nemesis darkwing says you really are a super villain and murdoch says i was too good at it no one noticed me which is why i decided to level up and destroy darkwing duck by removing your compass and i'm not sure i follow this guy's plot so logic well, yeah because the compass belongs to launch pad mm -hmm. and, and it was in a museum yeah i guess he just wanted to be noticed but i don't know why he was sneaking into people's bathrooms at night like a weirdo look at him he's literally wearing the mustache i know He's wearing the mustache. Yeah, and he really should have kept the mustache on and add something to his look. A little je ne sais Lorax. Ah, on this page yeah. it's explained. So L Darkwing says it wasn't my compass, it was Launchpad's. And Murdoch says, well, 
the physical compass was just a red herring. And then there's like some actual fish nearby that are red herrings. And they go, hey, <laughs> they're really offended. And then Murdoch says, I meant your moral compass. I just used the heirloom as bait. <laughs> and then some other fish say, don't say bait down here. It's offensive. <laughs> Making all the errors, and this guy lives here. Yeah. Darkwing says, your plan almost worked for a moment. I did lose myself. All I could think about was getting Launchpad back at any cost. Which is a lie, Darkwing. You were not thinking mm -hmm. about getting Launchpad back. You were just... Mm -hmm. He was very not concerned about Launchpad for a while. It was more about competing with Neptunia. Yep. And fighting some yetis, I guess. Yeah. And then Murdoch's like, what do you mean? You haven't even found Launchpad, and you never will! Ha 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 ha! Evil laughter. I'll send you that page with all the offended fish. But also, like, so this guy's a, a mer person, and he just was on shore, like, flopping? Because he went to the museum. I so guess... he was just, like, doing the worm through the museum. <laughs> Maybe he put a little <laughs> spring on his his bottom, and... He just tied a, a skateboard to his tail and just scooted. Yeah, why not? Okay, sure. So Darkwing fires his web net and says, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the one who understands extremely enigmatic egos enough to have you monologue your undoing while my team found and rescued Launchpad. And we see that indeed Morgana, Stegmut, Neptunia, and Gizmoduck found Launchpad. From somewhere. We don't know where. <laughs> he was in the like the vegetable drawer of the fridge. Like, yeah. no one ever looks there. And he's still alive. He is, in fact, breathing. Uh, every restaurant owner in St. Canard sheds a single tear of joy. Gonna have to get a refund on that funeral. Yep. And then Murduck says, You let them take all the glory? That's not Darkwing Duck. And Darkwing uh, admits that Launchpad is more important than Glory. And then says, I am. No, wait. We are the Justice Ducks. And then they all emerge from this gaping hole up to the surface where he has Murduck like, tied up, trapped in a net. And he says, but I do deserve most of the credit. And then the, the, we see the newspaper, the St. Canard Times, that says, Murduck meets justice. And once again, they captured my good side. And then it just says the end for now, which is a very abrupt ending. I feel like they oh. ran out of space. Yeah. There you can see it. There, I think that the is. whole thing with Frank, the squid, probably could have been put aside to put more of a confrontation with Murdoch in the rescue of Launchpad, to be honest. Yeah, it just, um, yeah, it wrapped up really quickly. And it was just like, so he, he just stole Launchpad. To dishearten Darkwing, and that was the plan? I guess he thought that Darkwing's ego would get in the way and he wouldn't actually make it down there, but I don't. Then nobody would know who he was anyways, because he was the Lorax. He was mm -hmm. in disguise. This Obviously, there's a reason Murdoch is not a well-known villain, and it's because he's not good at it. Precisely. And because he lives in a lost city underneath the ocean. And apparently just surfaces to turn Drake's water on. I do think, though, that it's very, that newspaper shot with Darkwing blocking out the rest of the Justice Ducks with his head mm -hmm. is very him. Yep. It basically, literally every single other person is blocked in this picture, except for him. Oh, look, there's the Ghostbusters and Luffy in the background of the newspaper. If you look at the lower left, do you see them? Like, the newspapers below. Oh, 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 yes, 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 I do. Who are you going to call? Luffy the monkey. Okay, well, there we go. Um, the Lorax lives to fight another day because he framed this Murduck. Bit of an odd ending because this is the last issue of the Darkwing Duck series. And obviously mm -hmm. it's supposed to kick off into the Justice Ducks, but it isn't really... Like, obviously with them saying the Justice Ducks at the end is their way of doing that, but it isn't super clear. Like, if you did not know the Justice Ducks comic was coming, you'd just be like, oh, that's just the end of the issue. I guess that's how that ends. So, but he was... So he stole the compass. Did he do anything else? Like, I know that they chased him to the wintry place. He stole... Like, not just the compass, but a bunch of other stuff, too, from that museum. Okay. Not the golden eggs, though. I think the golden eggs were safe. Good. Nobody better touch my golden eggs. 
<laughs> um, yeah, all right. So mer, mer person, mer, mer duck, whatever. Could have been the Lorax. Get a real thing going. But yeah, so that is the end of the actual, like, for now, the Darkwing Duck portion of the Dynamite comic series. What are your overall thoughts? It was okay. There was a lot of herb, which I appreciated and did not expect. But, I mean, it was pretty run-of-the-mill. Didn't do anything that particularly annoyed me, as far as I remember. Didn't break any boundaries either. It was very safe, mm-hmm. I suppose. But yeah, it was all right. What did you think? I thought it was okay, too. I feel like, in terms of if we're going to argue accuracy and following the canon of the TV show, like, there's probably stuff there that's a bit off in terms of, like, we. I think we discussed this, like, already previously, but, like, the concept of Darkwing being an inventor, which is mm-hmm. not uh, something that was a thing in the actual series. And aside from that, I'd say maybe, like, some of the dialogue and interaction is a bit off here and there, but nothing, like you said, that really b- would make me go, oh, this annoys me or like makes me like groan really loudly or anything. Like nothing really frustrating, if that makes sense. Right. Just, w- yeah. just kind of reading along like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. And like there was occasional like stuff that popped out that I thought was kind of cute or funny. And the art was uh, really picked up, I think, in terms of like quality. Like I remember at the very beginning we were talking about how like the first issue and the second issue were kind of stiff and reused Mm -hmm. a lot of like screenshot references and even references from like fan art and stuff like that whereas these later issues definitely seem to be more original style like the artists found their their footing so yeah i do like how colorful it is and all that stuff yeah i mean it was fine it suffered from the same Kind of like, I'm, we're going to make our own villain type nonsense. I was just like, um, okay. Because they, they did have every, like, they didn't have, ne- did they? Yeah, they did have Negaduck. He got, he got glassed. <laughs> oh no, that was the other guy. That, that was, the other guy that, got that was, that was Mr. Uh, what's his name? Duke. <laughs> Oh, Dr. No Good. Dr. No Good got glassed by Negaduck. <laughs> Straight from Vegas. <laughs> right. But that was it. And then it was, and that was the, the like, I, they don't really stick the landings with the, the end of arcs, I guess. Yeah. And I wonder if that's a time constraint thing or last minute changes, because sure. I, I, I would assume that maybe when they started writing this, they probably didn't know there was going to be a Justice Ducks series. And I could feel the possibility that maybe the writer was going one way and they're like, well, actually we need this to like lead to where it's like justice ducks. Mm -hmm. So maybe there was like a last minute changes and overhauls and stuff like that. Cause it does seem like for all the issues and this was issue 10. So I'd say all the arcs, they all kind of swept up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think as far as the ones that you've, you've read me of these, I liked the, um, the bit with the liquidator at the spa. Like, mm. I thought that was, that was, I think, the, the highlight for me of these. I liked Morgana trying to be a housewife and obviously not working out because that's not what she's meant to be, but... It's not. Don't put yourself in a box for this man, Morg. Launchpad working for her dad was funny. Oh, that's right. You have Malachio straddled on the... <laughs> <laughs> on the middle of the thunder quack what a ride literally physically okay well there we go we did it good job Ange. thanks you thanks for reading me comics yeah dynamite thank you for giving us more comics and we still have the justice duck series for negaduck we still have negaduck three and four to cover so we still got some comics down the road but until then do we want to spin the wheel we can, but I was just going to say in Negaduck uh, 3 and 4, that little malicious child comes back as our main villain. Um, anyway, uh, so we are going to spin the wheel. Uh, the wheel is looking a little sparse. We only have six titles left on it. Ooh. So let's see. Let's see. And I think we are... Oh, no. I can't say that. I was going to say, I feel like we're out of the out of the woods on terrible episodes, but Heavy Mental is still on here. <laughs> but... We don't have to watch that. Next time we will be discussing hot spells. <gasps> the band episode. Ah, one of my favorite episodes. 
<laughs> uh, the return of Beelzebub, and we get to see Morgana's school. It's a good one. I like this one. The lore. The lore. Axe. The lore. <laughs> axe, axe, yes. All right. So any other thoughts in closing before we wrap this bad boy up like a Murdoch? Uh, no, I think we've covered all everything we can so far about the comics. If any of you out there would like to share your thoughts on the comics with us, feel free to write to us at sleepless dot saint canard at gmail.com which i feel like i haven't plugged our email in a really long time yeah i usually don't remember what the email address is and then i tell you to say what it is so i'm glad that you took that initiative this time <laughs> yes <laughs> so y'all are good you can always check our show notes i put i always put all our contact info for that kind of stuff in there too yeah all right so we will be discussing next uh next time probably well, either Negadect number three or Hot Spells, whichever one we feel like doing. <laughs> yes. And then, um, yeah. So, everyone, remember that crime doesn't sleep and that the Lorax speaks for the trees. And the Yetis and compasses and running sinks. But not Frank. <laughs> Frank speaks for himself. God damn it. <laughs> 